follow the lines. Well, Mr. Dennis, what's the other song a little easier next week? What's the other yeah. guy? I, I play one. that funky music, white boy. There you yeah, go. There you yeah. go. I, do that. I got one that I'll do for you next week for entitled The Preacher and the Bell. That's the one here. That's it. That's it. Oh, uh, well, no. 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 We'll do the preaching the bell next week. All right, what I'd like, what I'd like to ask some of you to do, uh, I know we go to a lot of different meetings, and one of the things I want to ask you to do is, when the, when the speaker's up here, give attention to the speaker instead of you speaking at your table. Right. Because when I go to your meetings, I try to be quiet, so I'm asking the same respect of you when we have a, a, a presenter. And our next presenter is Dwayne Knocken for Senate District 26. Right, Dwayne? That's correct. All right. All right. Good morning. Thank y'all for coming out this morning. 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 <coughs> you have to excuse me a little bit. I'm fighting a little bit of a cold, so uh, I may be coughing and sniffling a little bit up here while uh, while I'm speaking. That's not normal. Uh, my name is Dwayne Knockin, and I'm running for State Senate in District 26. Uh, it's a district that covers predominantly starts up here in West Columbia, KC, rolls down around the eastern edge of Lexington County. Uh, encompasses the northern third of Calhoun County, northern half of Aiken County, running all the way into downtown Aiken, and a little corner of Saluda County. So it's a, a pretty big geographic area. It takes about an hour to get from one end to the other uh, and represents about 100,000 people. Uh, the district is currently represented by a 36-year uh, Democrat incumbent. I believe this is a vulnerable district, a district that's, uh, that's definitely in play this year. And uh, I'm looking for your support to, to run for this seat. A little bit about myself. Uh, I'm a small business owner. I own a marble and granite company. We do granite countertops. So this is kind of where my business plug comes in. If any of you are looking for granite countertops, <laughs> uh, give me a call and we can take care of you. got some of the best prices in town. Home show's coming up. Come out and support home builders. Uh, so um, that's what I've been doing here. I've been this, opened this business up in 2001 up here. Uh, we're one of the largest granite companies in the state. Uh, at one point, we had built this company up to be four locations uh, in four different states. We were servicing, uh, we had approximately 150 employees, and uh, we're doing work in uh, 11 different states throughout the southeast. So we, we built up a good business. I spent a lot of time building that. Uh, fortunately, I have some great partners who are, are managing most of the day-to-day -day operations of that nowadays, which allows me to come out and do things like this and get involved in, in our political process and try to make a difference. Um, other things I do within our industry, uh, I go around and teach and consult with other granite companies, teaching them how to do, run their business better, how to track their cost numbers. You know, our industry historically has been one that is a small, as I call them, mom and pop organization, people who were skilled in their trade but not really skilled in the business side. That's something our company's really excelled in in terms of knowing our costs and numbers. So we go out and we help teach that to other people in our industry. I think that all kind of rolls around to why I'd be good in this position in the Senate. We have a lot of issues with the way our money is spent in state government. Technically, our state has to have a balanced budget every year, so at least on paper it appears that way. But just because it has to be balanced doesn't mean we're not collect overtaxing and overspending. You know, it's really easy to balance a budget. You can balance it at $100 billion, or you can balance it at, you know, $2 billion. So we need to go in from a, I believe, as a business perspective, look at what are the core functions of government, what we should be doing as a government, and, and look at what needs to be cut in that. We need to bring down the overall spending level. There are a lot of things, I think, that need to be reviewed and eliminated from our budgets. Other things going on, a um, little bit more about me. I'm married to my wife, Heather. She's a uh, somewhat local girl in that she's from Ainer. Um, family of a tobacco farmer out that way. Um, 
I'm actually second generation in my stone business. My father runs one of our locations down in Alabama. Um, we have a two and a half year old son, Mason. And not that I'm biased at all, but I still think he's the cutest and smartest uh, little kid out there. Um, and I'll challenge any of you to fight over that. <laughs> but, um, so, but he's also another one of the reasons why I feel we have to get involved. Uh, trust me, I'd much rather be at home right now waking him up and getting him dressed for school. If you in the morning, you go up there and you turn on Thomas the Train and feed him M&Ms as a bribe to, to get his diaper changed to put on his, uh, his clothes to go to school. Um, but he's also the reason why I feel that sometimes I need to give up those mornings and come out and do things like this. Because it's his future that I'm most concerned about. You know, I think we've got enough time in this country. I, I'll get away with my parents, it'll be fine. But I worry about what we're going to be doing. What kind of debt we're going to be saddling him with. You know, from a federal perspective, what are we at? $50,000 a person for every man, woman, and child in this country? You know, those things have to change. Um, and, and the one is, if I, you know, if I sit at home and help you with anything, how can I answer for that in the future? Uh, whether win, lose, or draw in this race, I feel that it's something that, that has to be done. I feel that more people need to get involved and do things like this. Um, I encourage you all as well, in whatever capacity you can, to try and get out and get involved in the political process. It's important. Um, I'm going to leave the speaking at that point and open it up to questions, but that's ultimately what this is all about. I'm asking to be your representative and, and your employee. So I'll open it up. Any questions? <coughs> this will be a real short breakfast. <coughs> <I'm gonna answer. laughs> My question is, how in the world can we get to where we can combine school districts within each county? I was on the school board of Lexington one. So we have five school districts in, in Lexington County. Yep. It's ridiculous. Seventy-two percent of our cost of our property tax goes to school. Okay. Only forty-two percent gets to the classroom. And I have talked to every politician I can in the state. It's simple to do, but it has to come from Crump. So what would you do to do ahead and combine the school district? I would do, and I would be glad to sponsor any kind of bill that would do that. Uh, I would be glad to vote in favor of any bill that's currently on the floor to do that. Um, I believe that schools, obviously with a two and a half year old, I told you, schools are a big, big issue. You know, we're sitting at, depending on what poll you look at, anywhere from 35th to 48th or whatever it is in the country, and everybody says, whew, thank goodness for Mississippi and Louisiana, right? Well, it's not acceptable. We need to be shooting to be one of the top five states in the country, not just looking to be better than Louisiana. Um, I believe that's one way to do it. I think some forms of school choice uh, are necessary to help improve our school system. I believe that a parent needs to be able to choose whatever school they want their child to go to. Amen. To simply say that, well, because this is where you, you bought a house or where you live, you have to go to school here. It's not the way to do things. This is supposed to be a free country, last time I checked. Not doesn't always feel like that, though, does it? When they tell me i got to go to school right here. You know, so I, I think we need uh, a lot of change in that. That is an issue that's obviously it plays a lot to me as a two-and-a-half-year-old. What about the funding of schools? I'm pretty tired of property taxes funding schools. Have you got a better idea about funding schools rather than tacking on more money to property tax every time you turn around? I'm tired of the, the cost that's involved in it, and most of the time it's not a factual amount you pay on property tax anyway. It's overextended, it's not fair, it's fraudulent in fact in most cases, and you have no representation. What are you going to do about property taxes? Personally, we got two things. That one is how do we fund schools? Second, property taxes. Personally, and I know this is an extreme view for some people. I don't. I think we should eliminate property taxes. Property tax with one of the fundamental concepts of this country is property ownership. With the way property tax systems are, you don't really own your property. You rent it. And, and that's a, a fundamental issue I have. Now, is that going to be an easy thing? We're going to have to figure out other ways to replace that revenue. Ultimately, the state has to have some revenue to fund schools, um, be that through a fair tax, through income tax reform, whatever system that is. We do need some sort of comprehensive tax reform in this state. We need to balance the way the taxes are collected. 
um, come up with a fair, more transparent system for that. Um, but ultimately, I'm not a fan of property taxes. Like I say, I believe absolutely in the right of property ownership, and in my opinion, property taxes uh, go against that. Uh, do you think the, the state should be involved in uh, funding businesses, providing incentives to businesses, whether they're local or we're trying to induce them? Does, is the role of the state government, does it have a place in picking winners and losers in the marketplace? I believe that any type of government incentives to induce business need to be part of an open and fair system. If the government is going to provide any type of business incentives, it should be a system by which any business can apply that has even and balanced rules for its, its achievement. Um, we look at, especially today, trying to land some big businesses into our state there are some things that are being done that I don't always agree with, but I believe that we need to continue to try to bring good jobs to the state. Now, a way that that can be resolved somewhat is through that comprehensive tax reform. Right now, we've got a very burdensome property tax system. Um, you know, at 10.5% on manufacturing, uh, many states are lower than that. So in order to try and do some of that, I think what our politicians are doing is going in and trying to to manually override that. I think we need to do a comprehensive reform of that, get the rates down completely. So, so, so what you're saying is, if we got system. if we got the if we got it right for everybody, then the sin would be just to come here because it's a good place. Is that what exactly. you're trying to say? But but you are saying that the government should be involved in funding businesses. No, the government should not be funding businesses or, or providing doesn't. incentives. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a difference between incentives and reducing the amount they pay. You know, uh, paying a port, a smaller portion than what the listed rate is, the business is still paying in to the state. It's a net gain. We should not be net in any scenario who? that has a net negative cash flow to the state. Yeah, we're talking about state. I'm talking about businesses. I'm talking about your business, my business, everybody's business. So if you have a business that's receiving money and I have a business that's not receiving money, it's a net loss to me. Understand? Unless, unless the whole idea is to fund the government, which seems to be what you're saying. Yeah. I, I believe we need to have a much more comprehensive tax overhaul that levels the playing field for everybody. But okay. we don't need to have a state that's anti-business. Yes, if there's a way with property tax, how would you fund the government? We need to go with, you know, there are several other proposals out there. Uh, the fair tax is what they call one of them, which is a basically a state sales tax uh, that would go on everything. Um, it would eliminate a lot of the exemptions that are out there. Uh, the other method would be messing around with the income taxes and how we collect those um, to, to try and collect more revenue off of that, be it hopefully by expanding and making sure everyone pays. You know, right now, the latest number I saw, 49.5% of all Americans don't pay any income taxes at all. Is anybody in this room in that group? I know I pay them. Yeah, they're all social security. You know, but but that's, that's one of the keys out there is when you've got a, a populace where are approaching half and soon to be over half of the people are receiving government benefits but are not paying anything into it, we're, we're reaching a dangerous tipping point there, and, uh, and that's definitely something we need to look at. Yes. One more question. Well, kind of piggybacking off what, what Paul was trying to ask you. Yeah. Um, I met a man the other day who owns a, a 66 station slash store out by where I live on the western end of Lexington County. He told me he owns that station, he owns two in Aiken County and he's looking to build one in Saluda County. He told me he would never build or start another business in Lexington County again. He said because he pays twice the amount of property taxes on his business in Lexington County than he does in Aiken County. And to, to me, if, and I'm not a business person, you are, I'm not. But if you want to entice businesses to come in, to where you want to make your, your county, 
your district, your state, business friendly, right. need to be dropping taxes for everybody. Absolutely. You know, not 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 picking and, and, and choosing, or we're going to offer this one people an incentive, but we're not going to give that same incentive to other people. We should be constantly looking for ways that we can lower property taxes and and, and all other associated costs in the in the businesses, so that so that people from other states can look at South Carolina and say, well, you know what, man, it'd be a whole lot less expensive if we relocated to South Carolina versus where we're at right now. And let me tell you, it'd be a whole lot easier on all of our county councils and those groups that are trying to recruit business to not have to come up with a one-off package every time. So I agree, we have to reform the property tax system and come up with a way to make it much, much better to induce and recruit business to our state. There's one problem with property taxes. They say we're going to go ahead and raise the penny property tax or raise more money from sales tax, but then they don't put a cap on the uh, existing taxes we've got. So what happens, they add that more money to one thing, they still get all to get from another pot, and so you've paid more taxes all along and you've got, not got a reduction anywhere. Okay. I mean, how many times do you hear about a, a temporary tax? Temporary. You know, we're going to put this in place to, to cover this item. It's a one time and it's going to go away. It never yeah. does. That's where the property tax has got a question. Dwayne, no, I mean, we danced around this quite a bit. You don't want to ask this question, but your company does receive economic incentives from the state, right? You pay a lower tax rate than other businesses that would be around you. Uh, we are part of the job development program, yes. Well, <coughs> that's a good question, Dad. Well, I think it's a good question.